Hello, welcome to part three and the last part of my uh, Pinnacle re uh, Rearrangement Made Easy video series, okay? This is going to be the super hard uh, example problem, all right? And the molecule that we're going to be working with is this one. Does it look crazy? So, good. All right, so, uh, and what, uh, what reagent do we need to react this with in order to do the Pinnacle Rearrangement? Do you remember? And as always, you need H2SO4, or some sort of acid. So, H2SO4, H3O+, plus is our guy. Alright, so, for this one, the product is, um, I'm not going to ask you guys to do the product, the product prediction because it's too crazy. And if I saw this problem, I probably wouldn't be able to do it right away. I would just do the mechanism out in order to get the product. So, we'll just leave this guy as a question mark for now. And then we'll figure it out together. Okay, so for the super tough one, how do we do it? What, what, what's what's going to be the mechanism? Okay, come back. Okay. Yeah, what's going to be the mechanism? All right, so hopefully you said draw your H2O plus just like in the last two videos. You did? Good job. Thanks for listening. All right, H2O plus. Okay, so what's going to happen? We need to protonate. One of the OHs. Which one? Doesn't matter because they're equally as substituted and the molecule is like pretty darn symmetrical. Yeah? Your, prob your professor probably won't give you like a ring like this and then make it unsymmetrical. I feel like that's too hard. Um, oh, by the way, this, a problem like this popped up on my exam, so there's a possible chance it'll pop under yours. Alright, so I'm just going to choose the top one. Alright, just like before, you grab the H because he's basic, he's acidic. The bond goes to the O, and then you form, this is going to become O, oops, I probably shouldn't, eh, that's okay. You guys forgive me, right? I'll draw it in black. I'll, I'll stop switching colors. All right, and then this is the annoying part, but redraw this. What are you going to get as your next intermediate? You get that. Sorry about the crampness. I ran out of space. Yeah, rings are annoying to draw. And yeah, so you could have pronated either one. Doesn't make a difference. And what's next? What do you remember from the previous videos? Oh, yeah. Oops, I forgot to draw something. Hopefully you noticed that too. But I need a positive charge right here for the O because he lost electrons when he attacked. So you kick him off or he just gets ejected out because he wants to stabilize himself. All right, then what are you gonna get from there? <laughs> All right, did you guys get that? Good. All right, what's next? Am I missing anything? Yes, I am. Hopefully one of you pointed out carbocation, right? Because when he left, he took the electrons in the bond and this poor this poor guy over here is now positive. All right, so what do you do now? Just like before, you want to get the positive charge next to the O, okay, which is right here. But the problem is that we don't have any methyl groups or hydrogens to shift over now. So, dong dong dong. What do we do? Mm -hmm. So the one thing that you absolutely, absolutely do not want to do is you definitely don't want to do this. This doesn't make any sense. Because what you'll form is, well, this would get two, well, one electron, so get a lone pair. It would, the positive charge would be gone, because the carbon had one of the electrons in the bond. This electron in this, at the bottom part of the bond is now on the carbon, so lone pair. But, oh wait, whoops, that bond's not there. You get a carbocation over here, yeah, but... You never want that, that's very unstable. Carbon lone pairs, that doesn't make any sense. And you still have your, oh wait, your OH is still down here, but I'm not gonna redraw it because don't do that. It doesn't make any sense, not good. Not gonna be the right, not gonna be the right route to go through. Whew, okay, stop running markers. Um, so your only other choice is to break one of these bonds with this carbon because you have to deprive this carbon of electrons so that it gets, the, it gets a positive charge. So I'm gonna just arbitrarily choose, um, let's go with the left side, okay? So we're gonna start from the bond and go to the carbon, okay? 
Now, I know my, this might look kind of weird for some of you guys, but we're forced to do like a ring, in this case, we're contracting the ring, a ring contraction, because we can't do a methyl shift, we can't do a hydride shift. So, um, at this point here, whenever you move, Whenever you kind of screw around with the ring, I want I would recommend you guys to number your carbon so you don't lose any. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we have ten carbons in total. All right, all right. So redraw that. It's gonna be kind of crazy, but just do your best. Redraw that. Okay. If you can do this, then yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was trying to go with that, but yeah. Try it out. Okay, so my tip for you guys is to redraw the ring that, that, that you don't touch, that you don't manipulate at all. So that's this half of the, this half, this ring. So let's do that. Okay, carbons one is still, carbon one is still there, two is still there, three is still there, four is still there, five is still there, five is attached to four, five is attached to six, we didn't touch that at all. We know that the OH is still there, we didn't touch him. Uh, this time, he doesn't need to be on a wedge. I'll explain in a second. Now, okay, so 10 is now going to be bonded to 6. So things are kind of weird. Um, at this point, I recommend you count the number of carbons in your other ring. So 6 is going to be attached to 10, which is going to be attached to 9, which is going to be attached to 8, which is going to be attached to 7, and 7 links back to 6. So that's going to be 1 carbon, 2 carbons, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbons. It's going to be a 5 Remembered ring, a cyclopentane. So what I would do is I would redraw the connection with seven. Seven's still there. Add a new connection to ten. So let's do something like that. Ten. Ten is no longer connected to one because we broke that bond. That bond shifted up. So ten instead of like that, it did that. Uh, ten is still attached to nine. We didn't change that. And then, like I said, we have a five carbon ring. So just draw it right now. One, two, three, four. Draw your, uh, this is to complete the pentane. Yeah, and then eight. 10, 9, 8, 7. 10, 9, 8, 7. 6. There you go. Whew, okay. This is tougher, right? All right, so where's the positive charge now? Well, remember, the goal was always to put it on the carbon next to the O. So it's there now. And it's there because there was two electrons in this bond. I'll draw like that, okay? The, the bond is now between 10 and 6, so that's where the electrons are. 6 gained an electron that he didn't have before. 10 still has his, but now 1 lost his electron. So that's why 1 is positive. All right, All right. now you just follow through with the normal pinnacle rearrangement. Your next step is what? Resonate. There. And then we will be almost done. Resonance arrows, once again, don't forget, guys. We draw everything that was there. Nothing happened to these guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't use wedge because right now when the carbocation is here, you have no wedge and dash. You, it's a sp2 carbon. There's no wedge and dash. sp2 carbons are flat, trigonal planar. But I don't think you really need to worry about that for this scenario. Um, let's see, you have a double bond now. H is here. You have a positive charge. Right here. Right, he lost electrons. We resonated down. So, who needs to come in and save the day? Too many markers. Okay, our water from here. He is going to fly in and grab the H. So that frees up the electrons in that bond, that go to the O, and then that's our final product. Okay, five-membered ring. Touch to a six-membered ring. And to finish it off, all right, you have a ketone again. And that's your final product, and that's the oh, super extra tough uh, pinnacle re rearrangement problem. If you could do the, if you could fully understand what I talked about in all three of my videos for this video series, then you guys have the right to walk into your test pretty confident on the pinnacle 
concept. Okay, uh, any questions, feel free to ask me down below. Uh, yeah, I'll keep saying this because I think it will really help you on the test. Destabilize your vicinal dial, and then step two, force it to rearrange. Okay? Alright, so yeah, it was pretty cool, pretty fun for me to make this video series for you guys. I hope you guys liked it too. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure you like it down there. As always, tell your friends, and make sure you subscribe to see what next, what next, what's my next video series, okay? And if you guys have any suggestions or anything like that, feel free to post it down below. I can't guarantee that I'll make a video series for it, but I'll definitely keep it in mind. And if, core, if I'm debating between making a video series on your topic or another one that nobody has mentioned yet, I'll try and go with yours. All right, so good luck. And make sure to check back on Sundays for new Orgo Made Easy videos. All right, see you guys.